that was my game. Man. I'm so, less angry now. All right, well, good because because you're driving our topic today, right? Kind of, sort of, not really. Okay, all what right. do you mean? All right. Uh, the way that I wanted to hop into this week's topic, I didn't want to do it in a traditional sense. I okay. kind of just want to just dive into the deep end a little bit. Okay, all right. So we're gonna kind of be all over the place. <laughs> all right. Well, that sounds like me anyway. That sounds, so we're gonna be. Yeah, it's so, gonna be a, so it's, it'll be a regular a normal podcast. episode. <laughs> <laughs> like me anyway. well, this week of a normal episode yeah. of Untangled. Okay. So like we've been touching on a lot of just how um how the philosophy of Jesus changes our walk with him, right? Yeah. So now I want to get into the weeds a little bit because as we start to untangle that part a little more, mm-hmm. yeah. I wanted to see how it compares to other ways people um view or come to Jesus. Okay. And just in just a myriad of different ways. So yeah, I'm yeah. just gonna start throwing a few things at you. Okay. And I mm-hmm. want to see what you're all right, Thank so there's like a reverse impromptu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah. But okay. we don't have Nate screaming. At us. Yeah, okay. That that part is that that's good. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have a great idea. Tell me if this is a bad idea. Okay. You want Nate to scream at us at the very end of the episode? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that'd be great. That's how we, yeah, we've been yeah, running over yeah, all the time. Yeah. Like, we'll let Nate just yell at us. Yeah, like that's it. End yeah, the episode's okay. Over. okay. All right. Just keep that's that in a, mind. That's I'm a good sorry. ending. I like that. We'll cut this part out. I actually like this part. So my first thought. Okay. How how does following Jesus as a philosophy differ from following Jesus as a religion? Mm. Mm, that's what it. are the similarities yeah, yeah. that stick out the most to you? And then mm-hmm. tell me some of the things that how they differ the most in yeah. your mind. Yeah, man. I think, uh, oh, that's a heavy question uh, because... I think we have to first define then what following Jesus as a religion looks like, right? And and great question. All right. So yeah, yeah. And so so for me, um here's how I would here's how I'll say oh, it. Oh like that. Oh, yeah. I've all never right. seen yeah, yeah. you search for all words right. before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, all, right. all right. So here's how I would set it up. Come on. All right, all right, here's how I would set it up. In my mind, um we follow Jesus as philosophy. Until about 325 AD. Okay. And then we began to follow Jesus as religion, right? And so what I mean is, is if you look before the councils, before things were codified, right now you get some biblical scholars on here and they'll start telling you, no, things were codified earlier, whatever it is. But for most general purposes, most people will know that the Council of Nicaea was kind of the big one, right? 325 AD, Constantine, the whole deal, right? But before that... Before that, there were no rules around how you followed Christianity, right? And and we know that because we now read the epistles, like like Mark, you know, Corinthians, Galatians. We now read them like they're solving an old problem, but in truth, they were actually written to deal with new problems, right? So people had left; they started spreading the gospel everywhere, right? And then they went into Corinth. And they spread the gospel. And then people was like, yo, man, what do we do with tongues? And what do we do with gifts? And what do we do with eating food offered to idols? And right, like, and they, and they went into Rome. And in Rome, they were like, yo, man, what do we do with this? And then they went into Ephesus. And they, these was new problems, right? So everybody was like, yo, how do you do this following Jesus thing, right? The one thing we know for a fact, the one thing we know for a fact is that Jesus is the center and we should follow the things he said, right? But other than that, how do you do it, right? And so then you had, when you're following Jesus in that way, you come into a place and you'd be like, yo, man, let's figure it out, right? Let's imagine what following Jesus looks like, right? And so in that case, that's very freeing, right? That's freeing. If I said to you right now, hey, man, I want you to imagine how you would follow Jesus in this world, we're in right now, right? How do you, uh, and and that's the part I think is really cool about Untangled, right? How do you imagine, and, and we do this all the time with our mm-hmm. kids, right? How do you imagine following Jesus after the pandemic, right? Because that's an actual thing now, right? We have a post-pandemic culture, right? right. How, do you, how do you imagine following Jesus in that? How do you imagine following Jesus after post-January 6th? How do you fo- imagine following Jesus after the the racial shootings that went down. How do you how do you imagine following Jesus in this extreme polarization that we're in, right? And so 
So that's what was happening, right? That that it was spreading that way, right? And so people were imagining, right? And that's what following Jesus as philosophy allows you to do is say, how do I take this truth that Jesus did and how do I integrate it into the life that I'm actually living, right? But then following Jesus as a religion says, oh, no, no, you don't do that. We tell you what the rules are for how you need to function. And I say, ah, that one feels a lot more restrictive, right? That one feels a lot like, why do you get to determine how the rules should function, right? Right? How come like this, right? And we and we we do it, right? Church service, right? How come church service has a set time? If I owned a church right now, to be clear, if I had a church, right? If I ran a church, that mug would dodge Chiefs games. So service would be at 12 one week, and the next week it'd be at three. And the next week it'd be at nine. Right? Because it would dodge Chiefs games. But we can't do but 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 that's because I imagine a world where I say, where do people follow Jesus and love football? Right, in my city. Right? That's that's the truth, right? I don't care what you say. Pat Mahomes has a bad day. This city goes nuts, right? This city goes nuts, right? So for me, it would be stupid for me to say to the entire city, I know all of y'all think today is important. I don't. Come to service, right? Like, like I would. And so, but but the religion says, no, you you have it this time, this way. You wear these clothes. You do this many songs. You do this many things. And I say, man. Religion feels like it puts a lot of unnecessary structure or unnecessary rules around things and calls things wrong that there's really no reason for us to assume they're wrong. Right. Like what would be wrong with a moving church service time? But I could tell you if you did that, open the church right now. I dare you open a church right now. And they say, what time is service? And you'd be like, ah, oh, it depends on the game on Sunday. People would lose their, I mean, they lose their minds, right? That would be. So if know. I'm hearing you, the, the way that they contrast is, it sounds like you're saying that following Jesus as a religion is more like hypotheticals and doing it as a <laughs> oh, philosophy would be your imagination. Oh, I like what you did there. Yes. I that's what it sounds that. like. That's exactly right. I think. So let's do this then, because I think we've done a lot of laying the groundwork of how they differ. Mm -hmm. Give me one solid way that they are very similar. Oh. Oh, they don't just use Christianity either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think I think they both deal with truth, right? Okay. Um, and so what I mean is um philosophy okay. in my mind actually philosophy, science and um spirituality theology are all studying the same thing. Right. And and so you all come to the same truths. Um, it's just how we decide to look at them afterward. Right. So the scientist comes and what the scientist studies is we get to a point and we say, all right, something is happening and we don't know how physically it works in the world to make that happen. So we begin to study it. So we're studying what is it we don't understand what is happening that we don't understand how it physically works yet. Right. Mm -hmm. The theologian comes and says, Hey man, God is doing something. God is doing something here and we don't quite know how it works. Right. So they start studying the same thing. Right. Mm -hmm. Because they're like, we don't know how this works, but I'd love to know how God is doing this. Right. So they're studying the same thing. Right. Philosophy does the same thing actual ancient philosophy right philosophy in our culture now means like i wonder if the sun is that right it's some weird wondering thing but but the actual purpose of philosophy as it would have been known all throughout antiquity and even before was the question of how do you live the best life here on earth right that's what it, philosophy was really about how do you have the best life here and so the the philosopher comes along and says man when people have joy when people have joy, that means they're having the best life here. How does joy happen? Right. Right. And the scientist looks at the same thing and says, yeah, man, um, we know that dopamine's being released. We know that this is happening. But what's causing the joy? Right. Mm -hmm. And the theologian comes and says, man, God said he gives joy. 
how do we get it, right? So we're all studying the same truth, right? But what happens is what we do with it afterward, right? The scientist takes it and says, yeah, I now know stuff. And I'm like, all right, if that's what you want to do, right? Theologian takes it and says, all right, this is the rules that you have to follow. This is how you get to what God is saying or doing or whatever it is, right? And the philosopher says, how does this help me to live, right? But we're all looking for the same truth. And so I think that's what's really cool is I can look at pretty much anything, anybody who studied theology, traditional Christianity, and rock right with them, right? Because I don't think they're off, right? Mm. I'm just looking at their same truth in a different way, right? I'm looking at their same truth and saying, hey, I don't want to create a rule for that. I want to imagine how that fits into us living the life that Jesus intended for us to have here on earth, right? And and so, so we ultimately are covering the same thing. And so we come to the same truths, right? If you come and you'd be like, you know what? Jesus gives you joy. And I'd be like, yes, right? And the, <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, man, I have looked around and I have not found anything else that seems to give you that kind of joy, right? Man, you should follow Jesus that way, right? And the theologian is like, yeah, you should follow Jesus. He gives you joy, right? So we both come to it. The difference is what we do next, Right. So the theologian says, well, you get joy from Jesus. Then what you need to do is you talk to Jesus. Right. And I say, yeah, that's that's great. And I agree with that. Right. Except I'm not sure how that helps me to live the life that I think God wants me to live here. Right. So I would say, what did what did Jesus say we need to do to get the joy or and then you start reading and you'd be like. He actually said he gave it to us already. That's the difference, right? Is I would say, oh, he's already given us the joy, right? And if we choose to follow him, we already get the joy. So I don't have to no longer say, I need to ask Jesus for joy. I don't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. I say, oh, I follow him. And he says, as you follow him, you get the joy, right? All right. No, I, I, no, no, I, I see you going somewhere. No, no, yeah, no. Yeah, I love yeah. the answer. And I just want to, I want to add to it more. Yeah, please. Because <clears throat> hearing you talk, now I have a, a different question. Okay. It sounds like following Jesus as a philosophy makes you just come off as spiritual. Mm-hmm. Or do you feel like there's a difference between a person who views Jesus as a philosophy versus like somebody who's just spiritual? Um, yes and no. Okay. Yes and no. Right. Um, the, the primary difference for me is that the people who are spiritual in my experience don't ever really seem to have anything they can tell me to help me understand how to be spiritual, right? Like they just be like, you mean feel the trees. And I'll be like, okay, all right. But but what I mean is like, um, here's what it is. Okay. All right, I'm simplifying. Oh, because right, I yeah. had something. Yeah, yeah. Well, I would love to hear it. I, no, I'll, I'll simplify it. So, because right. that may not have been the best characteristic, characterization. So in my mind, um, I don't know if spiritual works. Okay. Right. Right. I just don't know. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it necessarily, right. but I don't know if it works. But what I do know is that everybody that I have ever seen who truly looked at Jesus, right, even if they were from other religions, right? Right. right? Islam is like, yo, he's a prophet, right? right? But Hindus are like, that dude's a demigod, right? Like everybody who's actually looked at Jesus is like, dude, that dude had it. That dude had it. And so, so for me, following Jesus in that way as a, as philosophy is, is distinct in that I actually have a thing that I'm following that I know in my mind, I know works, right? Whereas I don't know if I feel like you get the same definitiveness when you just are spiritual, at least in my, in my understanding of things. Okay. 
Do I need to put more words around it? No, oh, no, no, no. Because no. it's carrying me. Because you mentioned something in your answer that makes me want to ask another question. Okay, ask away. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, if you feel like other religions, like mm-hmm. how you mentioned like those mm-hmm. other religions, if they all, because they all had a vision uh, or a thought behind of who Jesus actually was, mm-hmm. right? Right. Regardless of how you viewed him as mm-hmm. if it was a prophet or if it's, mm-hmm. if we all chose to just follow what our version of Jesus was, do you feel like there would still be a need for like, do you think we will all be operating the same way? Or oh. do you feel like, you see what I'm saying? Like, I'm not saying that we should do away with religion or anything mm-hmm. like that, or if that's the solution to getting mm-hmm. with the, uh, doing away with religion. But if everybody followed what their view of what Jesus was, how how close do you feel like we would all be getting it? Well, or how far yeah, off? Yeah, yeah. well, like now there's two questions I got, or two points I got to make. Yeah, I'm just asking. All right, yeah. so, so I want to be clear first by what I mean by following Jesus. And I would say because... Okay. Because I would say, yes, I do think that. And so I need, I need to be clear. Part. Yeah, that's I need to be clear, part. right? Because right. as soon as you say that, everybody can buy. But here's what, here's what I, I've a- I asked this question at a seminar I did a little while ago. And it's, it's a question I'll ask you. Do you know what the word Jesus means? Right? A lot of times we, do, we just use, do you know what the word going. I think Jesus, Jesus going. means? Right? Because cause in ancient antiquity, names were not descriptors of people. Mm -hmm. They were meanings, right? Right. And so the children of Israel, right, literally meant the children, Israel means wrestle with God, right? Mm -hmm. So they were the children who wrestled with God. And if you look at Israel's history, that's what they look like, right? right? And when you begin to look at Elijah, right, or um, Samuel, right, prophet of El, speaker of El, right, Samuel, spoke for God, right? So so names had meaning, right? That's why we, the big scene, everybody talks about John the Baptist, right? What are you going to name them? Because they like, names have meanings. You can't just throw names out there, right? right? So I say, do we know what the name, the word, the word Jesus means? And the word Jesus means a good God saves. So for me, if you are following the idea mm-hmm. That a good God saves, right? If you if you genuinely following that, at that point in my mind, oh, that's the Holy Spirit and God's job, right? That 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 doesn't have anything to do with me anymore. And so I would say, if everyone began to follow the idea that a good God, God, right? We, now we got we got to walk this thing all the way through. Oh, right? we break it. we have a lot we to break talk it up. About. If we break it all the way down, right? God, I feel like Nathan's, uh, Nate's about to scream at us. Don't, don't let Nate scream. Don't let, no, no, don't, let, don't scream at us, Nate. This is good. Let this but, run on for a little. Yeah, yeah, but uh, but yeah, I think for me then, if I could get everyone, because if if that's what Jesus represents, then if you put that in any religion, right, and you say, all right, well, Israel, Hindu, whatever, and they and you say. It, for I'll use Hindus because they're cool, right? So in Hindus, <laughs> uh, I mean they're they're cool in 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 uh, in the sense of like they have a billion I know exactly people they can follow, right? Yeah. So I say if they go and they looked at all of them, right? They they looked at Vishnu, they looked at all of them, then they came and they were like, you know what? I'm gonna follow this Jesus one, right? And they were like, what is the Jesus one? Oh, the Jesus one believes that a good God saves, right? And then when you look at Jesus, let's be clear, when he's on earth, if he's God on earth or whether you believe in father, whatever it is, you believe that a good God saved. Right. right? And so if I could get everybody to start doing that, and that's what I honestly believe. I honestly believe that the very concept of Jesus is one that's undeniable. Right. Jesus is the idea that a good God saves. And the issue is that. Everyone believes God is good. Right. Right. Uh, and, and we know that because they believe goodness exists. Okay. Right. Because if you don't, if you, if you have a standard of goodness, right. right, that becomes your God. Right. So for instance, let's take it to the most basic atheist humanist, right? Atheist says, I don't believe in God. Here's what happened. Humans all got together. They decided these are the best rules to follow. And that's why we follow these rules of conduct. And I say, but you think we should follow those rules, right? You would say, yeah. You're like, so it's good to follow those rules. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be like, so 
your highest standard, your highest standard are those rules, right? Yeah, that's your God. Mm. That's your God. And you believe your God is good. You believe that it is good for us to follow those standards set by humans, right? Mm -hmm. So you, you believe that God is good. Your God only, but you believe God is good, right? So if you believe in goodness at all, you believe there's a standard by which things should be measured. That standard, by definition, is God. And we all believe it's a good standard, right? So following Jesus is literally saying, I'm going to follow the idea that the good God, my standard, saves, cares enough about me, interacts with me, redeems with me. And I say, if you begin to believe that the highest thing that exists in this world is good, and wants to interact with you, you'll be fine. If you begin to believe that and live your life like that, after that, it's the Holy Spirit's job. I ain't got nothing to do with that. So, yeah, yeah I know that's. With that being said, let's keep, let's move further on that part. So, if, if everyone, not everyone, well, everyone, everyone. started following that, right? Mm -hmm. And we had this. And let's say the result of it became a utopia, some form okay, of it. All right. So if that's a possibility, right, mm -hmm. can you explain? Because I have an idea of what religion is. <laughs> okay. All right. But I would love to hear your definition <laughs> okay. of what, what you think religion is and why do you feel like it's important, if you think it's important. Well, I do. I do think religion is important because um, I think. At its, at its original meaning and core, right? The, the true purpose of religion, in my mind, is human beings coming together to say, all right, I think of it as scientific knowledge, right? Because okay. remember, that's how they do scientific knowledge, spiritual, right? So right now, sci all scientific knowledge is humans coming together to say, we have established that these things work in order for us to function in this world, right? So gravity, hey, we have established, if you understand gravity, you will function better in this world, mm -hmm. right? So religion is the same. We have, we have gotten together and we have understood that in our pursuit of the fact that a good God saves, in our pursuit of that, we have found that these things work, right? Okay. Now, <coughs> now, I think that, of course, in our flawed nature of things, right, uh, there's a there's a book being wrong uh, by um, oh, what's her name? Uh, Schultz, I think is her name, but it's an amazing Catherine Schultz, okay. uh, uh, amazing book. But in the book, she talks about this thing that we have. I forget the exact wording for it, but it's it's something about the regression of science. Right. But the idea that the science we're finding Later on, we find a different science that seems to prove the other one wrong. And so so in essence, even though we've had an established body of science knowledge, we recognize there have been errors along the way. I think of religion the same way. We started to say there are some things we found we know work. But along the way, we recognize, ah, we got tripped up. Right. We, we got tripped up. We got messed up somewhere uh, along the way. And that's where my issue starts to come in, because yeah. if if I had to and I've had this conversation mm -hmm. with like other people, too, and I've had some insight, too. So I'm going to put all that together. Yeah, yeah, Put it all together. So because when you start to just describe religion out loud, mm -hmm. it just sounds like culture. Everybody mm -hmm. does stuff for the culture. Like mm -hmm. there's black culture mm -hmm. that if you are in the culture, you understand what that mm -hmm. means. Like. To understand black culture, it's a requirement that you eat certain things or you listen to certain mm -hmm. music or you view things a certain way. Mm -hmm. That's that's your way of showing that you belong to the culture. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Uh huh. I see that a lot in religions. And this is why I have an issue with it. Yeah. Because black culture changes <laughs> constantly. Yeah. What was acceptable in black culture at one point in time, if you give it enough time, changes. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Right. Uh huh. I mean, except hot sauce, bro. You got to always have that. Yeah. I mean, it depends on the hot sauce. <laughs> nah, man, it don't depend. I got traumatized. No, it don't depend. Nah, man, come on. No, nah, I'm not going to just yeah. throw my black card out Okay, there. all right. Okay, well. And that's, hold on real quick. You okay. <laughs> all right. All right. This is the bullying thing we were talking right. about okay. earlier, right? Okay. Well, we're going to come back to this later. Okay. No, but all seriousness, like, 
when religion starts to sound like culture, like it can be easily manipulated. It can well, be easily. The, well, I think that's where the issue went wrong. Right. Is you're right. Right. Religion is supposed to be cultural. Right. But we thought universal church, universal culture. And that's not the same thing. Right. Right. So how we express Christianity should be able to vary. Right. It should. Right. If you decide that you want to pray outside next to a river. Right. And someone else decides they want to pray using sage. Right. But both of you all's intention is following Jesus. That should be fine. But culturally, we would say, no, this it, you're part of the church. This is how the church functions. But that's so distinctly different than what we find in the Bible. What we find in the Bible is that people were practicing Christianity in all kinds of different ways because they were practicing their culture, but they were still part of the universal church. But we think universal church has a universal culture, which is why I can tell you that almost any church in America right now, worship service, two songs right before, right? Maybe maybe two songs at the end, right? I know there'll be a sermon. If you're in black church, there'll be announcements, right? Like I know, there has to be right? There has to be announcements, right? But because we've said, oh no, this is what the church looks like, and I'm saying, oh no, that's not the church. The church is us all unified in our pursuit of how do we better follow the way that Jesus said for us to live. That's the only place we have to be unified in, right? We don't have to be unified in clothing. We don't have to be unified in music. We don't have to be unified in structure. We don't have to be unified. But but we've said that culture and the universal church are the same. And I think that's where where you're pointing out, right? Culture changes, right? And that's what I think is happening in our world right now. Culture has changed. And if you think culture has changed right now, people don't go to work. The number of people who like think you have to go to your actual building to work has dropped dramatically. But we still think you got to go to church. But I'm cool with culture changing. Yeah. Culture is supposed to change. Culture is supposed to change. It evolves as we evolve. Right. But the God that I serve <laughs> is already evolved. Right. So like when you start to yeah, yeah. mix your culture in with like the God that I serve, because I feel like that's what happens at a lot of churches. Mm -hmm. They'll say like, this is how we serve this is mm -hmm. how we fellowship yeah. and everything else and if mm -hmm. you don't do it this way it's not one of those things where you're not invited in mm -hmm. you get condemned right and that's the problem right that's the that's the problem is the is that we call it wrong and that and i think that that is not what we sh and in fact that's why un that's another reason untangled exists right mm -hmm. is one of the things i say all the time is i don't believe you have to let go of a truth to accept a truth i believe that truths if things are true they should match. Right. But what happens is we'll go out there and people right now are in love with yoga. Right. Okay. I'm just saying they're in love with yoga. And the reason people are in love with yoga is because the truth of the matter is it works. If you stretch in, if you are taking the time to to lengthen your body, you feel better. It ha Right. So that is a truth. Right. Now we say. You can't have that That's truth. Right. <laughs> you can't have that truth. Right. And I say, why don't we say, hey, let's look at the parts that we know that are true there. Right. Because the reason people are doing it is because it works. And this goes all the way back to this goes all the way back to. And I should state this. Right. I should state this because it's very important. Right. And I did. Uh, oh, uh, Nate, that was a concept, brother. You weren't <laughs> supposed to do that this episode. <laughs> It was fun, man. Ah, Except that like part. Hard. You see, yeah, see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. No, no, it, it was very abrupt, man. It's the high level but, of I, but, it, but, now, but you know what? Nate's right because now we'll have to have that discussion next time. You would love that, would I you? would love that discussion next time, man. I'm going to try not to take that many weeks off. No, yeah, you should. Episodes. Please not take that many weeks off, man. We've missed you. Uh, tell, we, we've missed Lawrence. 
Uh, and it's one thing to lie to me. Don't lie yeah, on camera. No, I'm, te- I'm telling the people we did. We we, we missed I missed you. y'all though. I yeah, missed. Yeah, I missed yeah, this. I missed. I mean, this. minus the shouting. That part was that. That part that, that was scary. You know I don't want to come back. You to don't want to come back to that. <laughs> 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 Thanks, man. It's great. But no, this is great. We do have to continue. Yeah, this we do have to continue this. Conversation. And then we have to get brother Nate. Oh yeah, yeah. Camera. We got to get Nate on camera. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, great. we got to get Nate on camera. So no, shake your head. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah, no. Yeah, we no. see, we see you, Nate. They can't uh, see yeah. you, but we see you. You're part of the podcast. Now. Yeah, exactly. You're yeah. in there now. But all this is great. All right. Well, thanks, guys. So, yeah. Same time next week. Same time. Let's do it. Let's do it. Appreciate it. <laughs> thanks, Nate.